Hi there, class. Uh, welcome back. This is going to be the first tutorial uh, for starting your character animation project. So a couple of things before you get started. When you're doing your character animation, you don't have to use these dimensions, but I would recommend that you start with a size of around 16 pixels wide and 32 pixels high. Now you can go 32 by 32, but this is just kind of We've been working in 16 by 16 to do our tile sets. And so having um, a character that's essentially twice as tall as um, as your tile set should make it feel like it's got kind of a nice proportion to it. Um, we're going to see how this works. So make sure you can start at this one. You can go a little bit bigger if you want. You can always resize it as you're working if it's not working out for you. But uh, I'm going with the 16 pixels wide by 32 pixels high. Um, canvas. Now a couple things, uh, you've now gotten a little bit experience with with Piscal and uh, and this is going to be our first a little bit more complex project. Uh, and in this one when it comes to working with layers, layers are very very important with this because it'll make your life so much easier. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create this a very very basic little character here. So I'm going to use the circle tool um, I have an example of this kind of guy I've made before. So we're going to click and drag, and I'm just going to kind of make, um, I don't like, I'm kind of looking as I'm doing this for the, uh, how the edges work and whether they are kind of happy with them for this oval shape, but I'm pretty happy with this and grab this. I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Um, I'm also going to go to my preferences and just make sure I turn off tile mode. I don't need tile mode on for this. Close that down. Okay. So using the move tool, I'll kind of position this. Um, he's a little bit taller than 16 by 16, like, but he's definitely not a full 32, and that's fine. He doesn't have to be, but I just was giving myself that kind of room to work with. I've also got just a little bit of room on both sides, which is good, because I do want to uh, have... This character do a walk cycle and having that little bit of extra room at the bottom there will uh or on the sides there will really help so i'm going to quickly fill them in um and this is going to be or this is going to fill in for the very basic body of my character so i'm going to go over to layers over here layer one double click on it i'm just going to relabel it body and hit enter or return um because i want to keep this layer on its own I'm also going to click on my colors here. I'm just going to grab kind of like a dark color and I'm going to make him face a little bit to the right. So I'm going to just do kind of a basic um, old school like kind of square pixel eyes here. I'm also going to change this up to full size so we can see him a little bit better than our preview. So here's my Eggman. Uh, I'm also going to just throw a little bit of a shadow on him, right? We want to add a little bit of detail. You notice when I'm doing the shadow that I'm not filling in these corner pixels. You always kind of want to fill in just straight down and not cover the corners up because that uh, doesn't look quite the same, quite natural when you're working with this few pixels. Um, so I kind of got a little bit of a shade going on there. Um, but I'm going to leave him pretty plain for now because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to distract you too much with too many details. So we've got our Eggman here and um, I'm going to basically create what's known as about a five, uh, a five frame walk cycle. It's kind of about as small of a walk cycle as you can go with uh, and still have it look sort of natural. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're just going to jump away from Piscal here for a moment, and I'm going to show you this image that's going to be in your classroom assignment that you can reference. So it's labeled walk cycle, and uh, as you can see, I kind of have an egg-like shape. We're looking at the side of a, of, a, of a character right here. And the reason I was talking about layers is when you reference this, uh, in this drawing for helping you out with your walk cycle, you're going to be using essentially four layers at minimum in order to create a successful cycle. So you'll have your body layer, and then you'll have your front leg, your back leg, and the ground layer. Now you'll notice 
that the green layer or the front leg actually sits on top of the body layer. It should actually be up here. So layer one should be your front leg, layer two should your body, layer three, back leg, and then the ground can just be layer four or whatever. It's not as important. But the most important thing is your front leg should be on top of in your layers palette, your body and your back leg should be behind those two. And so this is five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. Your body doesn't really change, but you'll notice that in each of these, the leg changes its position. So it goes from sort of touchdown, pass, pass, knee lift, and then pass forward before it goes back into touchdown again. So this is a, this is a really, really simple walk cycle. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it in Pisco. So we've got our body layer here. Now we've got to, um, create our front leg. So we're going to go up here to the plus sign on our layers, click once, and we're going to label this front leg, hit enter. Now you'll notice front leg is on top of body. That means it's going to be, um, it's going to be over top when we're doing the drawing. And that's important because uh, we want it to overlap. So I'm going to just pause this here for one second while I uh, take a look for some preferences. Actually, no, I think we can do this here. Let's go to preferences. Um, and I want to go to miscellaneous layer opacity, and we're going to just take our layer opacity down to about 0.4%. Uh, um, and the reason that we're doing this is that so we can just focus individually on each layer as we're working on it. So that's in preferences, miscellaneous layer opacity. Okay, and click that to go off. I'm on my front leg now. Now you'll notice if you reference, you go back to our classwork over here, front leg, we're going to start with frame number one, where it's kind of out got a heel touch on the ground and the toes are up. So what I'm going to do is not use my pen tool. I'm going to use the stroke tool and I'm going to use it in white. I'm going to say, okay, if this is my front leg, this is kind of a profile and say that his hip socket sits right about here. Now this is important because uh, your hip socket never changes when you're doing a, a walk cycle. I'm also going to make it a little bit thicker of a leg. So I'm going to say, okay, so we want, um, we want the, the touchdown to be out here. Keep in mind, as you're going like this, using the stroke tool, you've got to, it'll stick to your initial anchor point. You do want to keep in, uh, in mind, essentially breaks. So breaks are those jags between the pixels where it's no longer sort of a natural pattern. So this looks really good. And then I, oops, so sorry, this looks, uh, this looks good. But if I go over one, we get that little weird jag right by the bottom of his body there, which I don't like. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, you want to try and keep sort of on these sort of lot straighter, uh, straighter, um, positions when you're making this. So I either want to be going right there, perhaps a little lower. This should be fine. Uh, so I'm going to do right there. And then because that's the heel, it kind of goes up. And we're just going to leave his foot like that. This guy's going to have a little bit long legs. And uh, yeah. I think that should work a little bit. I might erase it just a tad. I think that's a bit too long of a leg. So let's uh let's drop it down. I'm gonna leave it about right there. So there. There's his foot. So foot's coming out forwards. Now what I'm going to do is I'm basically gonna be duplicating this and then changing it. So when I go up here, we're going to frame one. We're going to hit right here where it has these two little um, copies, duplicate this layer. And then you're going to notice when I erase, I'm going to erase this leg, you're going to notice you can still see a ghost image there. And that's because I'm actually seeing the leg from the front. Now I'm going to go back to this. Now the second uh, frame, if we reference back into the classwork, is kind of right directly underneath. So I'm going to go, okay, so from there, 
and our ground layer is about right here. So it's a little, it's a little bit up there. So I'm just going to erase a little bit there. Uh, okay, and that's okay. It's not perfect. Um, and a little bit of this will change, like just the speed at which it's moving will hide some of the issues with it. Uh, once again, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to erase, make sure the yellow square is around there, right? You don't want to be drawing on a layer you've already um, drawn on. Remember, hip socket's always the same place. Oops, control Z. I wanted to do stroke tool, so click. And kind of nice jag there. You can see it go here, right? It's passing, kind of pushing off with the toe as it goes there. Duplicate and erase. And we are now going to draw. So now we get to the part where the leg is bending. And uh, I'm just going to put this there. Like that. Okay. You can see here in the preview at 12 frames per second, it is starting to actually uh, move kind of nicely. We're going to add one more. Erase it. Remember, it's referenced back in our classroom. It's kind of the 45 degree angle pass. Go back here using our stroke tool. So 45 degree angle is about like that, like that, like that. Might also just add a little bit of toe there. Now, if you look here in our preview, we can actually open this up a little bit bigger for you. We are now have a loop with the leg moving through those five stages of animation. You can see here on the side, we have our frames. We're just looking at one layer. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. I'm just pressing the down and up arrows to move through them. That's a good way to just get a feel for your animation. How is it moving? This is a super, super simple animation. I actually feel that um, this frame number one is perhaps a little bit off from what I want for it. So I might actually just pull it back just a little bit to like there. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. It was too long. Um, now, here comes the really neat part. Um, we're just going to do this again, but we're going to flip it. So create a new layer. I'm going to call this one back leg. And you'll notice it's up in front of the front leg and the body. We don't want that. So we're going to have it selected. We're going to press down, down to move it behind. Go back to frame one. And you'll remember from frame number one, we go here. Okay, back leg is in this push off position. And let's go for two. The, um, the hip socket will be a little bit off centered because it's kind of... Um, kind of like uh, just a little turn towards you. And uh, there we go, it's on the ground. And then we just continue like this. So, okay, so it's there, moves from that. You'll remember, these things just cycle, right? So this moves to this right here, frame number two, which is the same as frame number four for the front leg. So we're gonna do frame number two, the bent knee. Um, in this case, we don't have to duplicate. We just click on number two and make sure we're using the same hip socket. And I'm gonna actually go a little smaller here. Okay. And then once again, okay, this one's a little bit more like that. Remember, it's never going to be absolutely perfect when you're working um, with this level of pixels, just because um, just because it's so it's so small in resolution. But it is getting there. Notice that this line right here. We just follow it again. So we're looking at coming up right about there. I'm doing the toes that. Okay. 